you had a graph also showing the U.S. Uh, tight, you know, the proportion of natural gas, ethanol, uh, and, and so on, and that it's actually even 42%, up to 42% that comes from natural gas. And that kind of is included in the overall total oil production, which is confusing, yes, is. confusing, I think, for people. So you can maybe just mention or go through this graph a little bit. Right. So this graph shows... U.S. conventional oil in dark blue, kind of at the bottom, and what we see is that it's it, it's sort of declining or a little bit flat. There's the wedge of increasing tight oil on top of that, and then everything that's in sort of the hot colors of orange or yellow. Those are all liquids that come from other places, mostly natural gas. Okay, it's all include. It's called oil. But the, the largest percentage of it is natural gas liquids. But we add it up. There's something called refinery gain. Refinery gain, we put a barrel of oil into a refinery. We, we refine it into gasoline and diesel and all of it, you know, jet fuel. And, and those, those products have a lower density than the oil that comes in. So there's a volumetric increase um, because of the fact that we're refining it. And that volumetric increase is, you know, like a million, a million and a half barrels a day. That's counted as 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 oil production or oil supply. The natural gas liquids, as I say, they don't even come from from petroleum. Those come from natural gas. Um, those are they they come to the surface as a gas. They're taken to a plant and they're 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 stripped, is what we call them. We introduce chemicals and other things to force them into a liquid. And and then there, you know, there's there's fuel ethanol. <clears throat> In the United States, at least, we add this fuel ethanol to our gasoline. Well, you know, that comes from plants, <laughs> mostly, you know, corn and, and 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 other things. So that that's not even natural gas. So this giant wedge of, you know, as you said, 42% of US liquids production has nothing whatsoever to do with crude oil or condensate. It's, it's a whole different category. And that doesn't mean we should discount it or say it's, you know, it's, it's a mistake. No, it's, it's, it's not that it's just that the average person doesn't, doesn't understand. Then you can't, you can't use all of this 42% in the same way that you can, you know, the other 58%, you can't put this, you know these natural gas liquids or refinery gain in in your in your your diesel truck you know you can't you can't power a, a you know a train or a subway or a ship with it so um it's useful but it's used for different things yeah i think that was a really important point kind of i think in the back of the mind of people i think they think that maybe yeah listen to this and you have a decline in the oil production in the shale oil production and the world oil production can't we just replace that with natural gas then? But as you explained, it's not that simple. It's not, natural gas is not uh, a fuel that is a liquid fuel that you can just plug into vehicle or <laughs> use in vehicles or, or burn uh, as a liquid fuel, which is you know what we basically need uh, for a lot of chemical industries and so on. Uh, they are used to having um, a petroleum fuel uh, to make plastics and so on. Uh, so that's yeah. Well. Well, that, that, that's a good point. And, and, and I would add to that that, I mean, most of us don't think about plastics that often. But if, if, if you take, for instance, an electric car, um, the two largest components of that car are steel and plastic. And, and, and plastic has no other source other than crude oil and natural gas that we know of today in the world. If you go into uh, a hospital or a clinic or even a doctor's office, look around you and what you'll see is plastic everywhere, that the medical and the healthcare industry is possibly the largest single consumer of plastic in the world. So, you know, the people who want to get off of oil, and again, I'm, I'm not criticizing them. In fact, I, I, I admire uh, their enthusiasm, but um, when, 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 when they go to the hospital and, and, and need some sort of health care and the plastic isn't available, then they can't get the care that they need and they'll be very unhappy about that. So we have to think about the bigger picture and that 
you know, the the oil and the natural gas for as 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 bad as it is for emissions and for the the environment, it's also an integral part of 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 keeping human lives comfortable and and keeping people alive. And so, as we move away from or off of some of these fossil fuels, we have to be mindful of. We don't want to do that in a way that causes unnecessary suffering or even death. Um, and therefore, we have to be, well, we just have to know a little bit more than, you know, uh, stop oil, you know, get rid of all these terrible oil companies. Well, you know, they may be terrible, but unfortunately, every one of us um, uses their products every day of the week. And that's 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 the unfortunate truth. Yeah.